So let's narrow it down to just the bare necessities of the things that we need to figure out how much a price taker is going to produce. All we really need are a list of the quantities that are possible, the average variable cost curve, and the marginal cost curve. The average variable cost allows us to check the shutdown point, and the marginal cost allows us to figure out how much you're going to produce using the output rule. Then all we would need is any price, right? just pick any price you like, and we can answer, based on this, how much the firm should produce. Now we can take this and put it all on a graph, and this is going to allow us to figure out what the supply curve looks like for a price-taking firm. So here, as always, we have dollars on the um, vertical axis, and we have the quantity, or how much is being produced, on the horizontal axis. Here we have the marginal cost curve in red, which you can see starts out by dropping a bit, but then starts rising. Um, then we have the average variable cost curve. The average variable cost curve is typically U-shaped, right? um, and it has this very important property where its lowest point is where it crosses the marginal cost curve. Now, if you would like a mathematical proof for why that is, I'm sure you can find one via Google. Uh, for now, you can just trust me that that is the way it's going to be. Right. Okay, so, now remember, the rules are, whenever the price is below that minimum average variable cost, we want to produce nothing at all. If the price is above that minimum average variable cost, then we want to produce where marginal revenue crosses the marginal cost curve. In effect, the marginal cost curve acts as our supply curve. Right, so here I've made blue that portion of the marginal cost curve, which is the supply curve for the individual price-taking firm. As long as the price is below whatever that minimum average variable cost is, we produce nothing. But once we hit that minimum average variable cost, we want to produce according to the marginal cost curve. Now what this has done is it's proven to us why it is that supply curves slope up. Really, it comes down to the fact that our output decisions are based on marginal cost and marginal revenue, which means our marginal cost curve is basically the supply curve. Since marginal cost slopes up anywhere that it's above the average variable cost, we end up with upward sloping supply curves. Right? So really breaking that down, um, the individual firm supply curve, as we noted, is the marginal cost curve above that shutdown point. So your marginal cost is really what determines the supply from any individual firm. And therefore, if we go back up just to a little bit larger picture, market supply as a whole is going to be determined by the marginal costs of the various individual firms, since market supply is really just adding up what each individual firm supplies. Right? If we have one firm producing 10, another producing 20, and the market as a whole, we're producing 30. Right? So in the end, it's really marginal cost that underlies all of supply. Right? Right? Now, really the reason and what this implies for us is that in the short run, we know that firms, we can't really exit or enter. It takes time for me to sell my factory. It takes time for me to build a new factory. Right? So right now, I'm just constrained by the choices that I can make at the moment, those things that I can change on very short notice. Now, what that means is that fixed costs aren't really going to affect my decision in the short run because I can't avoid them. There's nothing I can do that will either increase or decrease my fixed costs at this very moment. Over time, I can change them, but I don't have enough time in the short run to make those changes. Now, since fixed costs don't change with quantity, which is the thing that I can change right now, they're not going to play any role in marginal cost, which means they're not going to have any impact on the quantity that I decide to supply. So instead, we're just reacting purely to marginal cost. If marginal costs rise, then supply is going to decline. That is, I'm less willing to provide the good at any given price if my marginal costs are higher. Meanwhile, if the marginal costs are lower, then supply will increase. That is, I'm more willing to provide the good at any particular price. So when we wrap up the short run for price takers, what have we found? First is that we've proven the market supply must slope up because individual firm supply slope up. And we know that happens because the supply curve really reflects marginal cost, and marginal cost, we know, slopes up. We've also pointed out that supply is affected by marginal cost, in effect because the supply curve is the marginal cost curve. Now what that means is that fixed costs are not going to have any impact in the short run. In the long run they're going to matter, but we'll get there in a later video. Finally, in order to find a firm's production level, we're going to use the output rule. That's where we choose the quantity where marginal cost and marginal revenue are equal to one another. Remembering, of course, to check the shutdown point. If the price has fallen too low, it might be not worthwhile to produce anything at all. So if we're below the shutdown point, we produce zero instead of following the output rule.